My name is Chuck Miller from Oracle. I want to talk to you today about something that we're really excited about, which is the Enterprise Command Center for Oracle Process Manufacturing, or OPM. One of the questions I get from my customers all the time is, uh, well, since EBS is a, a great system, but how do I start my day? Uh, where, where is my entry point into OPM? Because typically, enterprise application users have access to a lot of transactions and a lot of data. And there's screens for entering and query data, but very often it's, it's difficult to figure out what you have to do next. So instead of relying on uh, IT developed reports and screens, users need a way to quickly identify and act on the most important business issues of today. Oracle Enterprise Command Centers are aimed at solving the problem of what users should work on next. Included with the Oracle eBusiness Suite, Oracle Enterprise Command Center dashboards uh, enable information-driven navigation to help users focus on the right information at the right time to make the right decisions. Also enables you to have a conversation with the data and you're able to drill down and we'll take a look at that uh, today. This is our safe harbor statement. And I am gonna launch the um, Enterprise Command Center for Process Manufacturing, and the first screen I come to is Batch Status. Notice that I have several refinements over here that I can drill into, and as I make selections on my left-hand side, these metrics across the top of the screen and these graphs are going to change based on that. And a matter of fact, let's highlight some of the metrics. What this is doing is looking at all the batches that I have, regardless of their status, and bringing them in indicating whether they're delayed, on hold, uh, et cetera. So we've got uh, some issues we need to work on. Remember, I didn't have to ask the question of the system. I just came into the system and say, said, what's happening? I scroll down a little bit on this screen so you can see some of the stuff. We're talking about batch um, that are delayed. So here's the start delay and steps which are delayed too, and this is by organization. So I have completions delayed, starts delayed, steps delayed, and then individual routing steps um, that are also delayed on here too. So I'm getting a full picture. All I did was say, let me see what was delayed. Drill, uh, paging down a little bit further on that same screen, I see all the batches or work orders that are uh, in that delay category. And this goes across product lines and it shows me everything based on time. That was the batch details. I can also take a look at the screen by batch dates if I want to determine what's late. And I've selected or highlighted five batches and I want to do a comparison to see how these five batches uh, match one to the other. So after I've made my selection, I hit compare and I can see that the uh, start and completion duration in a number of days. So this is just a quick and easy way for me to take a look at what's being delayed. And from here, we're going to try to figure out what we can do with these with these batches. So I'm going to exit this part of the screen. And I've drilled down further into the actual items um, that are delayed. And when I hover over this particular item, which is the purple, which is the, the biggest one, I see this item and there's 18 batches that are uh, delayed starts. So I need to investigate uh, what's going on with that a little bit further. So as I drill into that, I also see the customers that are impacted by that, but also the refinements are being populated by what I'm drilling into. So there's intelligence behind this, which is picking up my refinements and is putting it over in, in here for me. So I can look at this to, to change this if I want. Also, my numbers at the top of the screen are changing based on what I'm doing. So I want to see if maybe the cause of the delay is I have some unallocated items. Uh, we'll start there. And I do. When I hit the unallocated items tab, I see that I have a bunch of items that are unallocated. This one, this 5213, seems to be the, the biggest problem. And I bet that is impacting this finished good, this 5110 over here. So I am going to click on uh, 5213 to bring up some detail. And indeed, I do. I see that 5213 is uh, causing product 5110 to be delayed. And I see uh, a number of batches that are in various stages 
that are being delayed by this uh, lack of allocation. So I want to go and see if there's any unexpired lots. So maybe I have some lots that are in danger of uh, expiring that I want to consume in these batches. And I'll go through and apply that. And I look here at this batch draws my eye. I see that I have expiration periods, but I have less than a day. So that means that there could be a partial allocation of this item to this lot. But anyway, any other ingredient may be expiring in less than a day. So I'm going to scroll down on this screen to get to the batch details. And I want to do an update on this. This is the batch that had the goods that were expiring in less than a day. And I click update and it brings me into the batch record. And I see on the batch record that it is fresh strawberries. I need 240. I've only reserved 100 against this. Now I want to ensure, you know, Oracle EBS has allocation parameters, but for some reason could have been a shortage. Um, a lot did not get allocated to, to this batch. So I'm going to go through and do a manual reservation against that because I want to select that lot that is about to expire in less than a day. So I'm going to hit the reservations tab and it brings me to the select available inventory screen. And on this screen, I see my lot with its expiration date which is going to be in a, a few hours. And I've gone through and I've entered in the quantity I want to reserve. So I'm going to consume this and get it in process before it expires and I'm able to, to do this. And that was pretty cool because I started out with a bar chart to get to this and enterprise command centers are more than just pretty pictures. They allow you to drill back into the data that supports this. So I'm done with this and I want to show you something else. I'm back at my home page, but this time I'm going into the production quality. Because I've got so many delayed batches with uh, this 5110 item, I want to make sure that there's not a quality problem that's causing the delay. Make sure it was just the allocations. So I see that it doesn't look like it is. I have my uh, sample numbers across the top, but I have a, a bunch of batches that have run through okay. So it tells me that the, because they're all accept status and I see all the tests associated with all my uh, specifications and samples over here. So this tells me that everything has been tracking okay. But uh, I want to double check that. So I'm going to click into this and I see my sample dispositions for that 5110 have been uh, accept, showing me the tests that have, have been taken. And Notice too, my refinements have changed as I've gone along in, in quality also. I want to page down on this screen and I see all the samples and work orders or batches that have been taken. Now I have the capability to drill down further into the test. So I've pulled up the batch number, the sample number, but also the test and disposition of the tests that have been taken, also tester and results and, and all that stuff that scrolls further to the right. So that was just a brief demonstration of the Enterprise Command Center. Uh, I thank you for your time and uh, I hope you enjoyed that.